We're here at the largest water purification plant in the world for indirect potable reuse in Fountain Valley, California, the Orange County Water District's Groundwater Replenishment Program. This facility, Groundwater Replenishment System, first went online in 2008 at a capacity of 70 million gallons per day. And we've designed in expansions over the years. So we've expanded to 100 million gallons a day in 2015. And then we just finished our ultimate build out or our final capacity of 130 million gallons a day in 2023. And it's part of our job to make sure that this groundwater basin in North and Central Orange County continues to be sustainable as it's the main drinking water source for two and a half million people. And the facility you're visiting today is a big part of making this aquifer as sustainable as possible as we deal with uh, ever increasing water scarcity and uh, climate change issues. Now the plant uses a three step advanced treatment process, first going through microfiltration, then followed by reverse osmosis and ultimately ultraviolet disinfection and peroxide for the disinfection process. But Mayhul, could you tell us a little bit about the microfiltration here? What's actually going on in the microfiltration process? Yeah, so the, our, the main purpose of the microfiltration is to provide pretreatment for the reverse osmosis. We really want to remove the larger particles like suspended solids and bacteria polish the water before RO. And the way ours is configured, as you can see all around us are these below grade concrete basins. There's 48 individual basins, each one containing 684 microfiltration membranes like we see in the display behind us. And the, the whole point of this is we operate what's called a submersible or vacuum driven microfiltration system. And that's why we have open basins. The, the goal is to push the or force the water through the side walls of these microfiltration membrane fibers. Each one has about a 0.2 micrometer pore size and then accumulate in the hollow center and move on to the next treatment step. And then um, through backwashing and normal self-cleaning means you'll hear that going on while you're here that every 22 minutes we'll, we'll backwash every three weeks. We'll do a full chemical cleaning. And the, the main reason is we want to keep this as clean as possible run as low as pressure as possible, save on operating costs. But what we really like about the microfiltration process is that it provides a real consistent water quality, even if the feed water quality spikes in turbidity or other uh, process upsets from the wastewater treatment plant. This can provide a nice constant quality of water with a high level of integrity, which is a huge requirement of the recharge regulations in California regarding indirect potable reuse projects. We're now in the reverse osmosis membrane building here. And as you can see, there's a huge array of all these membranes here. But Mayhul, could you tell us a little bit about what's actually happening? Like how is the water passing through these things? Yeah, so a reverse osmosis, the whole goal here is to remove all of the organics as much as we can, get them down to a very low level, um, and also remove the inorganics, right? The salts, because wastewater is naturally salty. So after the water's gone from microfiltration, we'll pump it here. We'll reduce the pH a little bit with some sulfuric acid down to 6.9, add an anti-scalant chemical. And then all the tubes you see behind me, each of these fiberglass vessels, eight inches in diameter, each one has seven reverse osmosis membranes shoved in back to back to back. And then we run the water through three stages of membrane to allow us to get a very high recovery, 85% recovery. So for every 100 gallons that comes into this process, we get 85 gallons of clean water, 15 gallons of the reject or what we call the concentrate or brine and we'll dispose of that and then uh, the water can move on to the next treatment step. So what makes this one a little bit unique is just the sheer scale of it. You know, each one of these trains that we're standing by produces 5 million gallons a day and there's 27 of them. So there's just a lot of fiberglass tubes, as you can see, <laughs> and over 28,000 individual RO membranes. So it's the, it's the scale of it that really makes it impressive. But the goal here is to produce a water of ultra pure quality to meet the potable reuse regulations in California. So we want to go beyond drinking water quality with this step. The 
final stage of this whole process is the ultraviolet disinfection followed by peroxide. So could you tell us a little bit what, what's happening in these, these tanks here behind us? Yeah, so what you'll see behind me are three steel vessels that are stacked on top of each other. So what we're trying to do is after the water goes through reverse osmosis, we want to dose it with hydrogen peroxide, four milligrams per liter, and that serves as an oxidant source. And then we want to expose it to high amounts of ultraviolet light, form a chemical reaction, and then that will further break down low molecular weight organics because we know of some that will actually pass through even the RO process that are still regulated in California, and we wanna remove them through this last treatment step. And so this is another requirement of our California indirect potable reuse regulations that we have to have an oxidative type step. So that's what the ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide serves. So this is our UV system. We have 16 trains. Each one does 8.75 MGD. And these three vessels you see behind me, the water will just go through one vessel in parallel up to the second and up to the third, kind of like a serpentine path. And the peroxide is dosed ahead of time and the reaction's quick within, you know, minutes, not even a minute, maybe 40 seconds, the water is through the train and out. And now it's gone through this chemical reaction. It also serves as a redundant barrier in terms of disinfection beyond if anything were happened to get through the microfiltration or reverse osmosis in terms of pathogens, which is highly unlikely, but we also have this, it serves to disinfect as well as remove organics. And so each train here has 432 low pressure, high output ultraviolet light lamps. And unlike the first two treatment steps we saw, there's no residual or waste stream. The water just gets exposed to peroxide or radiated and out to the next treatment step, which would be our post-treatment or adding minerals back in. Another vital component about the success of the groundwater replenishment system are the tours, not unlike the one that we've been on today, but these are conducted for multiple parties, including school children and even like international dignitaries. But it's a really important process for you guys. And I'm, my question to you is how has that changed the way that you interact with your community? Because I imagine this has been like a really useful tool to show people things that they otherwise would never even know existed and probably gives them a better understanding of the value of the water that they're they're drinking on a regular basis. Yeah, what we found and others in, in California in particular, outreach is the most important component of a large project like this, especially a reuse project. It, we really need to educate the public on the reason why we're going to something like indirect potable reuse, because the initial reaction, especially 10 or 15 years ago, was like, that doesn't seem safe or is that is that something we can really do or why do we need to go to wastewater recycling as another source of potential water for our aquifer so the big thing is we want people to see the science and technology behind it we want them to be comfortable with it and then we want to educate them on why water conservation and water scarcity is such a huge issue especially in southern california and why we want to go through this level of treatment to enhance our other sources of water and, and use this source in particular <laughs> treated wastewater that probably 20 years ago was not even really a consideration. So this goes a long way towards not just educating the public, but getting the public in general comfortable with the fact that the science and technology is there to recycle treated wastewater to standards that are even beyond drinking water and that it's totally safe and that we have the personnel to operate this plant efficiently and safely. Well, and then it all finishes here at the sinks where you can get clean water that we can cheer. So cheers. Thanks for the tour. We appreciate it. Good. <laughs>